different to avoid all misunderstanding. I am horrified at Trump. He is a catastrophe. But what we should never forget that he is the result of some process. And to cut a long story short, this process is the disintegration, the failure of left democratic establishment. So if we just fight Trump now, it's just what in medicine they call symptomal healing. You take a pill so that it doesn't hurt. But to cure the disease, something has to happen in the Democratic Party. And what well, I'll I come from back what to that yeah. cause in a moment, but uh, I mean, you explain your position uh, just now. But back in November, you did say if you were American, you'd vote for Trump because the alternative, Hillary, was even worse. I mean, why did an avowed Marxist come to that conclusion? It was a very cynical reasoning because my hope was precisely that if Trump is elected president, everyone will be shocked, horrified at this horror, and something will happen, like Bernie Sanders and so on, in the Democratic Party. It was not the time in any sense for Trump. Trump is horror, not only as to content of what he's doing, but in the form of his activity. She means disintegration of public morality. You can today tell publicly things that if 20 years ago you were to tell them you would be mocked, proclaimed an idiot. It's a moral disintegration. And although I'm a Marxist, I'm a very serious moralist here. I think that public morality, or rather customs, how we are allowed to speak in public matter. I'll come back to that point, but uh, if you your analysis, time. your analysis though of what would happen if he won, that Republicans and Democrats would have to go back to basics, have a rethink, that was wrong, wasn't no. it? Because Yes it was, because Why? if you look at the Republicans, uh, the Senate are with him, the House are with him, the Republicans have rolled over and are having their tummy tickled. You have a line of people who said he was beyond the pale, now going into Trump Tower, trying to get a job with him. Let's take There's some been time. no rethink. Let, first, in, uh, in Republican Party, let's take some time. You will see they're already split on social measures because it's clear that Trump's politics is inconsistent. He has even some leftist elements. He wants so much public, uh, public investment in uh, collective work projects and so on that no leftist dares to do this. I predict that although he may succeed for some time, but uh, there will be going on disarray in the Republican Party, but especially my hope is, maybe I'm wrong, I admit it, that the Democratic Party will find the strength to redefine itself. Your own British conservative poet, and I like intelligent conservative, T.S. Eliot, said sometime that some, at some point that sometimes in a religion, the only way to save the orthodoxy is through radical heresy. I think that, again, a certain left liberal orthodoxy, the people who, who, who go together in Davos, these people pro-abortion, pro-LGBT, but totally pro-capitalist, this vision embodied by Hillary Clinton, I have nothing against her personally, but we know what I mean, the vision that she stands for is coming to an end. And you think that? Because I mean, yes, Davos absolutely. opening, we've been covering that today. Uh, and in a sense, if you look at both Brexit yeah. and the Trump victory, it was almost a scream from people that they didn't feel connected with all of those things you've just described that yeah. you think are typified yeah. by Davos. Do you think, therefore, their influence is on the wane or simply will it morph into to something else to accommodate what has happened? No, I think the problem is, the problem is much more seriously. serious. In what sense? Uh, uh, Noam Chomsky, who doesn't like me, likes to use the expression manufacturing consent. All those unwritten rules of how politics is actually run, the custom, the, all this broke down now. Something that shouldn't have happened did happen with the election of Trump. But not only this, look at what happened here in the UK with Brexit, even more importantly, Important. Look what's happening in France with Marine Le Pen. Look what already happened in Poland and so on. A and and I think, think that, do you think that the Brexit in other European countries there is a danger of it re replicating? No. Uh, all these phenomena are deeply ambiguous. The ABC, the basic axiom for me is that, paradoxically, at least part of the Trump support and Bernie Sanders support draw from the same source of popular rage. And I think the ultimate reason of Trump's success is the failure of the left to capitalize on this popular rage to offer a feasible alternative vision. 
that's the big problem. Uh, but, but it's exactly your analysis is exactly the same when you, you're talking about Europe because you talk about. Uh, but it is the uh, same phenomenon. Yes, the Europe being caught between surrendering to global capitalism or surrendering to anti-immigration policies, the populists. But yes. what is the way to navigate? If, only a more if, radical if neither left. of those two only options only are the correct ones. Left. What is let the, me the, the option to go? No, through? no, no. But uh, let me be very precise here. I'm not playing some stupid Marxist cards in the sense of radical left, new communist party. No, I'm only thinking about some kind of uh, reinvention of the good old welfare state with a new internationalism. Like, uh, today the left just opposes uh, 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 TIPP and all those international agreements and just wants to return to national sovereignty. I think, no, we need different international agreements. And yet there's no sign of any of that actually emerging. Then we are lost. You, you talked about... Then we are lost. Yeah. Then you know what the future will be? That we will have all of us, presidents like Putin, Modi in India, that's the new formula. Fully integrated in global capitalism, but nationalist conservatism.